let's examine the units of position, velocity, and acceleration. We're going to do some dimensional analysis. We're going to use the units of length and time. And we're going to construct these very important vector quantities. So let's start off with position. Now I'm going to write position using this notation. We're going to have r represent position, and I'm going to put an arrow above to signify that it is a vector quantity. It has both a magnitude and a direction. Why am I using r over here? Well, sometimes for position, we use x. x, y, z. Those are all valid ways of describing position. But this is the vector quantity over here. So this actually describes the radial vector coming out of some origin. So we have an origin for our coordinate system, and we take that radial vector from the origin to the particle, or whatever object we're trying to describe with this position vector. So that is where this r notation comes from. And it's also very convenient, especially when we're doing polar coordinates. And in the other videos in the quantum mechanics playlist, we have used polar coordinates and Cartesian coordinates to express this vector quantity. So what are the units of position? Well, position has units of length. So I'll write that as capital L. So capital L is going to denote length. So we're not talking about angular momentum. That's a different capital L for a different video. This is dimensional analysis, so we're talking about length. So we just have one unit of length. And the SI unit of length is a meter. So I'll write m over here. Now, there's another point of confusion over here because m uh, often denotes mass. But because we're talking about the units over here, this denotes the meter. So one meter is the SI unit for length. And length is denoted by L. So everything on this side is going to be units. Now, let's take the time derivative of this position vector to get velocity. So velocity, which I'll represent by v with a little arrow on top, v is equal to the time derivative of the position vector. So we've got a time derivative acting on this over here. So what is that going to do to the units? How are the units going to change? Well, what we're doing with, when we're uh, taking the derivative is we're actually dividing by a very, very tiny increment in time. We're taking the limit as a little change in position uh, is divided by a little change in time. So it's that ratio. That's what differentiation is. You're taking the ratio of two quantities. You're taking the limit as those quantities get very, very small. And then you're seeing what happens in the limit that those quantities become very small. So you can treat this as delta t. There's a tiny little delta t that we're uh, dividing by, and we're taking the limit as delta t goes to 0. So what would that do to these units? Well, if you're dividing by a tiny little increment delta t, you're going to be dividing by a unit of time. So the units for velocity are length times time to the minus 1, or length per time. So velocity is in units of length per time. So how does this translate to SI units? Well, the SI unit of length is meters, and the SI unit of time is seconds. So what do we have? We have meters times seconds to the minus 1. Or, in other words, meters per second. Another way of writing this is actually uh, meters per second. So you write m, and you write it and it's basically as a fraction, right? because it actually is a fraction. Differentiation is taking the ratio of two quantities, and then using calculus and the, the magic of calculus to turn that into a continuous quantity that describes how a quantity changes at each point in time. So that is what this differentiation is doing. Now let's do this differentiation again to get acceleration. So we're going to take a to be acceleration. So the vector a is acceleration. And acceleration is the time derivative of velocity. So I'll write that over here. We have dv dt. So we've got the time derivative of velocity. And what is this actually equal to? Well, because velocity is the time derivative of position, we can just substitute that over here. And that's going to give us the second time derivative of the position vector. So this is the notation for the second time derivative. So we start off with position. And if we take the time derivative twice, we're going to end up with acceleration. So again, I'm using this little uh, vector notation, this arrow that goes in the top. And that signifies that it's a vector quantity, and it has 
in three dimensions, it has three components. In two dimensions, it has two components. So that is just what, what that little notation actually means. So we, we've written acceleration in two different ways. What are the units of acceleration? If we continue this pattern, we're going to see that acceleration has a, a unit of length, and it also has time to the minus 2. So we've got length per time per time. And how does that translate into SI units? Well, the SI unit system is going to look like this. We're going to have meters per second squared. So we have to the minus 2. That is exactly the same as writing it like this. We have meters over second squared. So meters per second squared. Or meters per second per second. Length per time per time. So this is telling you how the velocity is changing. You're taking a tiny little change in the velocity and dividing it by delta t. And then you're taking the limit as delta t goes to 0. And that is what gives you this derivative over here. So we've taken the time derivative twice, and that's given us acceleration. These guys are actually some of the most useful quantities in dynamics and kinematics. Velocity, vel uh, velocity position, and acceleration. So these quantities can actually be used to find the position of a particle and the time evolution of a particle uh, over time. So that is why these quantities are so widely used. And that is why these definitions are so useful. Going beyond acceleration is not very useful. If you take the time derivative of acceleration, you're going to get a quantity that is sometimes called jerk. But jerk is not as useful as acceleration. Acceleration shows up in Newton's laws of motion, but jerk doesn't. Jerk is, is, is just as easily represented as the time derivative of acceleration. So there's actually no need to assign names to these higher derivatives. This is sufficient. The most important takeaway message from this video are these units over here. Position has units of length, velocity is length per time, and acceleration is length per time squared, or length per time per time. So that is what happens when you differentiate with respect to time twice. You introduce two factors of per second in the SI unit system. So you have meters per second squared, or meters per second per second. So this is what we're going to be using in the next few videos when we do some dimensional analysis on the expressions for velocity and acceleration in polar coordinates. Make sure you watch those videos. We're going to be using uh, these units to try and analyze uh, and see if all of those quantities are dimensionally consistent. So we want to make sure that the units of all the things that we're adding together in an equation, that they match up together. Because that is very important in physics. We need the units to match up for it to be a physically meaningful equation. So make sure you find those videos. You can find them if you click on this.